microsphere settings of the unit viruses are the ones that are not cellular. Some characteristics that they share is that they um, obviously are, are not cellular and that they're obligate intracellular parasites. So that means they cannot reproduce on their own. They need a host cell to reproduce. Although that's not something unique to them because we learned uh, that chlamydia, which is a bacteria, is also an obligate intracellular parasite. But all viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. They have a genome that is relatively small because they have no metabolism and they don't have nutritional needs, so they don't need all the enzymes to be glycolysis and subcycle and that kind of thing, so they're not doing any of that. Their genome is small, just several genes in, for some of them. What's also interesting is that their genome may be RNA or it might be DNA. So that's something unique. We, we don't see that with cellular things. With cellular things, the genome is always double-stranded DNA. But for viruses, it may be single-stranded RNA or DNA, or double-stranded RNA or DNA. Also, the direction that their RNA goes in can be five prime or three prime, which is the same as messenger RNA, and that's called a plus, and then SS for single-stranded RNA. Or it can go three times five prime, which would be the opposite of messenger RNA, so minus single-stranded RNA. Um, over the decades, how they classified viruses have changed a lot. In the earlier days, they characterized them by what kind of animal they might infect, what kind of thing they might infect. Um, but now, the two main things that are used to classify viruses are the type of nucleic acid, that would be the RNA or the DNA, whether it's double-stranded or single-stranded, and plus or minus one strand. And then whether it has an envelope or not, which I'll talk about in a moment. So the basic structure has the genome, so that would be in the center of the virus. In there, there might be an enzyme or two that the virus needs to take over its host cell. It just varies depending on the virus that you have there. And then that uh, genome with any enzymes it may have is surrounded by a protein coat um, called the capsid. For some viruses, that's all there is to them, is that. Others, and those are called naked viruses, by the way. Um, others may have an additional layer made of phospholipid, phospholipid bilayer, so that's really similar to a cell membrane. And also embedded in that phospholipid bilayer, there will be viral spikes. And when we were hearing about the COVID on the news all the time for a couple of years, we were talking about the S spike. Um, but there, it just depends on the organism or the virus as to what spikes it will take on. And I'll talk about the ones that influenza has here in a moment. The envelope and its viral spikes are needed to attach to a host cell if you're an envelope virus. So if something happens to your envelope, you cannot infect anything and you are essentially dead. If it is a non-envelope virus, it's using its capsid for attachment. And what's interesting is the phospholipid bilayer can be disrupted more easily than the capsid layer. And so if the virus dries out, that can mess up that phospholipid layer. And certain chemicals also can affect it more, like alcohol. And so for instance, the hand sanitizers that um, people often use are oftentimes alcohol-based, and so they're more effective against envelope viruses than non-envelope viruses. The shape of viruses varies a lot, and we're not going to get into the details of the different sorts of shapes. Usually if it's an envelope virus, it looks more like a sort of a round blobish thing. But they're ones that look more like tube shaped that are um, non-envelope ones. It, it just it varies, it varies a lot, um, especially among our non-envelope viruses. What's also interesting is all the once the virus infects the host cell, the genome gets uh, transcribed and tran translated to make all the viral parts. And the viruses are then just assembled 
and then release from the cell. So they don't start out as like a baby virus and grow up to be an adult virus. They just get assembled and then they are released from the cell. And we'll talk about the different ways that that can happen. And we talked a little bit about it when we talked about transduction. We already talked about classification. The limit cycle of the virus is the um, reproduction cycle. So this is where new viruses are made. Of course, we need an appropriate host cell. This is going to start with the virus attaching to some receptor on that host cell. If it's a non-envelope virus, the virus is going to use its capsid to do that. If it's an envelope virus, it's going to use viral spike in order to do this. The virus is limited in what cells it can reproduce in, mostly by its ability to attach to the host cell. So if it cannot attach to the receptor, then it's not going to be able to infect that particular cell type. This can limit what kinds of species a virus can infect, like can it infect a tobacco plant, or can it infect a dog, or can it infect a bacteria. And it also can affect um, even more detail than that, like in a multicellular organism, it can limit what cell types in that multicellular organism the virus can infect. Or if we're talking about the viruses that infect bacteria, the bacteria page, it can limit what strains of a particular species it's able to infect. But once it's attached, then it's gonna go on inside of the cell, and then that's where the biosynthesis will happen. So the viral genome will be uh, transcribed and translated into the viral parts. The viral genome, of course, needs to get replicated, and then it all gets assembled. If the virus is an enveloped virus, some of the proteins will go through the secretory pathway to get to the cell membrane. So the viral spikes what need to be at the cell membrane because when the enveloped virus leaves the cell, it takes with it some of the cell membrane and that's what becomes its envelope. And so it needs to have those viral spikes already in there when it goes to bud off. If it's a non-envelope virus, it doesn't need that part and so the cell itself just lyses and releases all the new viruses. And so the maturation part is where it's all put together and then the release is the last part of what I just talked about. All those viruses may be clone to the original one that infected that cell. There are some viruses though that have high mutation rates and so we get a lot of mutant viruses coming out of there, like HIV for instance. Um, that type of RNA virus, and in general RNA viruses have higher mutation rates than DNA viruses. And um, as you recall, there was a, all that length of time that they were telling us what new variant of COVID was coming out. Uh, that is because it is a, an RNA virus and it's changing as time went along. Also, we can get, um, so if we have a, a cell that gets infected by two viruses that are the same type, then we can get genetic recombination of the different parts and, and wind up with something new as well. 